Hi, are you interested in learning how to tie tube flies? Well, if you are, stick around. My name is Peter Charles, and in this video we're going to cover all of the basics of putting together a tube fly. Now, tube flies are very effective for Atlantic salmon, for steelhead, bass, pike, pickerel, you name it. If a fish chases it, they're likely to eat a tube fly. So they're very, very effective and very useful. So stick around with this video and we'll go through everything you need to know. So let's start by looking at what a uh, basic tube fly looks like. So here's a little pattern I use on the Grand River to chase steelhead and smallmouth bass. It's called my Emerald Shiner. And as you notice, the first thing is it does not have a hook back here. It just has a little piece of plastic tubing that's attached to a metal tube. And then from there on, it's like a basic fly. We have a tag, some body material, a wing, a head, some eyes. So, you know, in many ways it's the same as a fly tied on a hook. However, as you can see, this one has no hook. We attach that later. One of the advantages of using a two fly is that we can replace the hook at any point if it gets damaged. Uh, if I bend the point on this hook, I can just cut it off, tie on another one, and I'm back in business. The fly itself is still usable. Also, when we're fighting a fish, we find that the uh, two fly tends to pull out and it will slide up the leader. So now we've just got this small hook in the fish and it tends to hold better plus the uh, flies out of the way of the fish's teeth and our flies last longer. Now let's look at the first piece where this all joins together. This is called the junction tubing and it's a piece of plastic where we slide our hook in where we've tied it on our tippet and it holds the hook in place. Okay let's see how this works. Here I have one that's already rigged up. My hook is tied on and as you can see I've passed the tippet down through uh, the body of the tube and I've made a knot to hold my hook on and then I just push it in and now it's ready to go. I can fish it and cast it and uh, we're in business. Now one of the interesting aspects of using two flies is that we can position the hook how we like. So if I'm fishing over um, a bottom full of snags I can take my hook point and turn it so it rides in this fashion. Now I can run it over the bottom and I don't have to worry about it hooking up on logs and rocks and what have you. However, if I'm fishing uh, over open water and I'm fishing higher up in the water column, I can fish it in this fashion and not have to worry about it. So that gives us some options when we're fishing on how we position our hook. Now do we need this piece of junction tubing? Uh, in reality, we can fish a fly without it, though in a fly like this the hook can be moving all over the place and not stay centered so when the fish takes the fly they could in theory miss the hook. But there are ways to rig stinger hooks so the hook is way back here and we're not using junction tube in that case but that's really a subject for another video. Now the thing about hooks is they come in a variety of styles. There can be long shank, short shank, up eye, down eye, straight eye. They all have an effect when we push them into the junction tube of a tube fly. So let's look at a, at a few examples and see the, the changes when we use one style hook over another. So here's an example where I'm using a up eye hook and I have it upside down. And you can see how the fly and the hook rides. The interesting thing is this part of the hook is below the, the tube. So it helps to balance the fly. Yet the point is right up here and it's relatively a snag free set setup. Here's the same idea with an up eye hook in junction tubing pointed down and as you can see much of the hook is up in the wing and the point is not as far down as it would be if it was way down here. Here's an example of one with a treble hook. You could put a double hook in there if you wanted as well. Now that depends on your local regulations so be sure it's legal to use a treble if you want to do so. So here's an example with a longer shanked down eye hook and as you can see it looks a bit silly the way it's rigged here and I don't think anybody would want to fish in that fashion. If we try turning it the other way, you know, it's sticking way up and that's not going to be balanced. That fly is going to be flopping over when we fish it. Now there's something you should watch out for with smaller flies and that is the offset hook. And as you can see here, the point and the shank are not in alignment. The point is offset. And what happens is this will act almost like a rudder and it will want to turn the fly in the current. So the, as you pull through, it will start to turn like this and it will flip your fly over. 
Now, that won't matter very much with a large fly. If you're using a big pike fly, for example, and you have an offset hook, it won't make any difference. But if you're using a little fly like this, it'll spin this fly around. Okay, let's look at the tubes we can use to tie our flies. Uh, here we have a clear plastic one. Uh, this is from Canadian Two Fly. They come in a pack like this. And you cut them to length. So, for example, I would take this and cut it right here using a razor blade and roll it or a knife and roll it. I wouldn't use scissors to cut because I'm likely to create a ragged end here and I'd partially close off that tube and it would be harder to put my uh, tippet through it. Now once we've cut a piece of tubing to length the next thing we have to do is flare it. And what we do when we flare it we just bring it to a flame like this and we just gently roll it close to the base of the flame and what it will do is create a ridge. And the purpose of this ridge is to hold the junction tubing in place and when we use it at the front, when we do it at the other end, we, if we do it here, it'll prevent the, our thread from slipping off when we're tying the fly. Now one of the things I can do with a tube like this, if I want to add some weight, is slip on a cone. So the process I would do here, I would tie this fly first uh, on the tube, but I would not flare this end. And then when I was done, I would slide on my cone, push it down to the end, where the uh, end of the fly was finished and then I'd slice this off leaving a little bit left and then I'd put that in the flame and flare it as well. This is another kind of tube, it's called a bottle tube and you can see it has a different style of end. This is the end you tie on and this is the end where you attach your junction tubing and as you can see it has a liner in it and this liner is very important when you're tying metal tubes. One of the problems we have with metal tubes is if we did not use a liner, the metal would eventually cut through our tippet. Uh, so when we're casting, all of a sudden our fly would go, go flying. Uh, so we have to line it with plastic to prevent it from cutting through. So let's see how that's done. Here I have a different kind of metal tube. It's a plain metal tube. This one is made out of copper. And what I do here is I slide in a piece of plastic liner and I want a little bit sticking out each end and as you can see there's a little bit here and a little bit there and then what I do is I come in and again bring that to the base of the flame roll it around watch as the plastic melts back now I turn it around I do the other end and there's my tube with the plastic liner flared at both ends the liner won't come out and that tube now can be used you just slip your tippet right through you can see the hole there and you just slip the tippet right through and you're in business let's let's look at some of the tubes that are available there's aluminum in different sizes copper in different sizes here's some bottle tubes in different colors and sizes and metals and here's a smaller diameter tube with the liner that you can use to align the tubes. And it comes in different lengths as well. This one is 3 32nd. This one is 1 8th. Those are the common sizes we use for metal tubes. And one of the great advantages of tube flies is I can tie the same fly on a plastic tube, an aluminum tube, a brass tube, a copper tube, and a bottle tube. And have them all sink to different rates and fish differently. And it gives me the advantage to apply the same pattern over the same piece of water at different length just by changing the fly. And yet I'm really not changing the pattern at all. I'm just changing the way it sinks. So that's a very, very handy uh, um, aspect of tube flies. And it's a very common uh, thing that I do is when I'm putting my tube flies together, especially with metal patterns, I'll tie them on a brass, a copper, and aluminum so I can fish it at the same fly at different depths. Okay, let's look at the vices we can use to tie tube flies. Obviously, a, a standard vise like this isn't going to do the job for us. There's no place to attach the tube. Now, I can go out and buy an expensive vise like this, and it has a collet, and I can open this up, put the tube in, and I'm in business. But if you're just starting off, you might not want to invest in a, such an expensive vise. So you can get something like this tube fly uh, adapter that is put out by Canadian Tube Fly. And I just insert this in my standard vise tighten it down and now I'm in business. I can convert my regular vise into a two fly vise. Let's see how this works. It comes with three mandrels. As you can see there's two in the pack and one here. 
And these mandrels are sized according to the type of tube you're using. So if you're using a large diameter tube, you'd use a large diameter mandrel. You try to fit the mandrel to the size of the tubing. You want the closest fit as you can possibly get because we insert our mandrel in here and we don't want a lot of slop. And then we put our mandrel in the end of the vise. And then we tighten down. Now we have a problem. If I go and tie in some thread, it just spins. It comes off. Not very good, eh? So what we really need to do is make sure this tube is in here solid. So what we do is we just loosen that off and then we push nice and hard. And now we tighten while we're pushing and now it won't move. Now I can tie my thread on and it's good and solid. It's not going to move. So remember with this adapter, always put up some pressure when you're putting your tube on. Otherwise the tube will slip. It's very, very annoying when you, when a lot of people, when they first start out tying tube flies, they don't know about that and they fight that tube spin all the time. Now you can imagine we've completed our fly here. We've tied on the fly. We're all done. Now we have to put on our junction tubing. And again, we can buy junction tubing in a variety of colors. We can get clear. We can get it in these very colorful colors. We can use these colors to match our, the body of our fly. Or we can do it in a contrasting color and create a little bit of a strike zone, if you will, for the end of the fly where the hook is. So it's quite flexible, as you can see here, and all we need to do is slide it on the end of the tube, like this, and then we cut off, leaving a roughly a quarter of an inch, and uh, we're ready in business, we're ready to go use our fly. Tying a tube fly is really no different from tying a fly on a hook. So if you can tie a basic wet fly on a hook, you can tie a tube fly. You can see the basics now of how the hooks are used, how the junction tubing is used, how the vice adapters are used to uh, tie the fly, uh, the types of tubing we use, the type of junction tubing we use. Once you get all that uh, understood, the rest of it is just like tying any other fly. The only thing to keep in mind is the tubes are a little fatter, so you tend to build up bulk a little quicker. But in most cases, that's not a worry for a steelhead or Atlantic salmon, or bass for that matter, or any other species. Usually, we're not worried too much worried about bulk, but they are a little fatter. But apart from that, it's the same as tying a fly in a hook. So there you go. Tie up a few, fish them, enjoy them. Don't forget, you can use different styles of hooks. You can use up eye, down eye, straight eye. You can use singles, doubles, trebles, if your local regulations allow. And um, you just need a plastic bag to hold your flies, a little box to hold your hooks, and you're in business. So enjoy. Enjoy.